All right, I wonder what word is missing here. Oh, the whole first slide. There it is. All right, so uh, again, I'm Matthew Riley. Um, I, w I work at the Center for Genome Sciences at USAMRID. Uh, I did want to thank Oxford Nanopore for not just letting me present this data and hopefully get some feedback, but also for the patience with my constant pestering both online and in person. Um, so we were looking at the MinEye and thinking, okay, what are the current capabilities? You guys are doing great work. It's really cool stuff, but we were kind of wondering, like, what can we do now that we can reproduce and kind of establish? Uh, the obvious answers were rapid identification of individual bacterial isolates that are cultured, as well as complete genome sequencing of the same. With that, what is the minimum infrastructure that we need, as well as the simplest and fastest protocols? We would prefer not to do fragmentation or PCR if we can help it, and what's the best and fastest DNA extraction? And then once you do that, how quickly can you get results and how good are they? So we did two experiments um, initially, looking at rapid identification. And the first one, we took seven ATCC reference um, bacterial isolates, grew them on plates, pulled the colonies off, did individual DNA extractions using the Master Pure Complete DNA Extraction Kit, and pooled the DNA together at non-standard ratios, did a 1D ligation run for 24 hours on a 106 flow cell. The second experiment, we took eight of our emission-relevant strains, um, again, grew them on plates, picked colonies, did the same DNA extraction, except this time the difference was we mixed the colonies together without barcoding, prior to going into the DNA extraction. So we literally just picked a couple of colonies from each plate, mixed them together in one tube, did a single DNA extraction, ran it on a RAD02 for 12 hours on a 106 flow cell. Not surprisingly, the uh, experiment one, we got about 106,000 reads, and we used Epitome, so the, the WIMP workflow. It was able to correctly identify everything, uh, all the ATCC strains, if they were in the database at the strain level, if not at the species level within three hours of beginning the run, and we found out that using only 20% of the data, we were able to get actually the same, the same results. So kind of surprisingly, mixing them together without barcoding actually gave us slightly better results using the rapid kit with less reads that were far, far longer. Um, and within one hour of starting the run, we were actually able to get species or strain level identification on all of the, the isolates in the sample. And again, 20% of the data, which came off in probably a few minutes, gave us pretty much the same taxonomic breakdown. And it appears to be quantifiable because these ratios do reflect kind of what we put in. Um, complete genome sequencing, kind of what you'd expect. We did a Francisella, a Burkholderia, and an Acinetobacter palmani. Again, grew them on a plate, pulled the colony. For these, we did one fresh flow cell for each one. We did a 1D for 24 hours, followed by a rapid for 24 hours, uh, washing in between. And we also, so the Francisella was uh, the GenBank reference genome, and the Baumani and the Malii we actually sequenced at CGS on our PacBio and or Illumina for um, getting a complete genome for a reference just to align them all together. And what we found was kind of not surprising. The, this is the Francisella against the um, GenBank sequence. We found some SNPs and some small indels, but 100% of the gene content was in agreement. Essentially the same thing for the Baumani against our PacBio assembly. There were some very small, those look bigger than they actually are, it's the Kablamo visualization. Um, only a few indels and small, small differences here and there, but the overall structure and again, complete gene content, as well as the antibiotic resistance because this was a clinical isolate, um, it did actually agree between the two as well as with the phenotypic profiles. And this is the chromosome one of two chromosomes in the uh, Malii genome, and again, it shows essentially the exact same thing, 98 to 99% identity across the entire thing, circular assemblies, 100% uh, gene content agreement yet again. So take home message, it can, uh, nanopore sequencing can rapidly identify within a couple of hours of acquiring a plate in a clinical lab, theoretically. We could even pull directly from a primary plate because again, we mixed these samples together, the colonies, they could have came a swipe from a primary plate, seems like it would work, we have, we're working on that. And complete genome sequencing does produce a accurate, circular, you know, good genome with good structure. I don't know if I'd do SNP-based analysis or antimicrobial resistance based on SNPs, but again, I would do, um, you know, the overall phylogenomics and things like that are, are pretty doable. And then the, the portability, low cost, and all the other characteristics that we know about um, and that you guys are, are aware of make it not only applicable for field setting, but uh, potentially moving into our BSL-3 and BSL-4 suites, which is our, our next step. So again, thanks for Oxford for letting me present and uh, the Army for letting me present as well. And I'm happy to share any details with anybody that's interested. And there's a poster out there too. So, all right, thanks.